you've got the sewing machine, but what else do you need to get started? Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects. We're back for another edition of Learn to Sew in 2020. This was actually a viewer suggestion, so thank you and keep them coming. Somebody wanted to know what kind of supplies do you need to get started sewing besides just the sewing machine? We're going over some basic sewing supplies. I've got lots of recommendations for you. And I will tell you, this sewing supply stash is not something you're gonna build overnight. So don't feel like you have to do this all at once. You can pick these up, you know, over time, over years. I've amassed quite a stash, but again, I've been sewing since about 2014. So I've had lots of time to purchase things or find things, figure out what I like. These things, you don't always need everything just to start. When I first started off, I used my coffee table and I used some scissors to cut out fabric. I used like a tape measure, but then I upgraded to like a self-healing cutting mat, a rotary cutter. And those are the two things, obviously with the, with the sewing machine, I would recommend you get some extra bobbins, whatever your machine model is. I've always found that having some extra bobbins for your machine helps because then you can do different colors and not feel like you have to like take the thread off of bobbins you already have. So having like 10 to 20 bobbins for your machine will come in handy because you want to use, you often use many different thread colors, many different thread types. So extra bobbins for the machine. This one takes a brother bobbins. So like the brother SA-156. Here are a couple extra bobbins that came with the brother. And I also have a brother embroider machine. So I can actually interchange the bobbins that came with the inverter machine. I'm probably gonna get some more just because I love having extra bobbins. So that's what I'm gonna do. You are also gonna want some extra needles. This machine, the Brother CS7000i, does come with a few different needle packs, which I thought was cool because it gives you enough to get started. It also gave you like four bobbins total. Obviously you're gonna want more than that. So those are the first few things I would pick up as uh, machine accessories. These are the needles that came with this machine. You've got a twin needle, a couple different sizes, and you'll find when you start getting into sewing that you do need different needles for different types of fabric, different sizes for different threads. And I am not an expert on this, but I will below link a guide on different needle sizes and also which threads they correspond with because the thicker the thread you use, the bigger the eye of the needle should be. But uh, Schmetz has put out a pretty good guide and I'll also try to find some others to link to them. I can't say I'm an expert on those, so I'm not sure if I'll do a video on them, but there are some helpful resources out there. If you wanna get familiar with thread types and needle types and how to choose the right needle for your thread. We've touched on needles, we've touched on bobbins. Of course, you need thread. There are so many different types of thread and I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. I tend to use a few brands. I use a lot of Guterman thread. I tend to use Arfil, which is one of my favorite brands. I use Sulky. I use Madeira for the, the embroidery machine. And I tend to wanna match my thread with the project. Like if I'm using cotton thread, I will usually be corresponding that to like a quilting project, something with cotton fabric. If I'm sewing with say polyester material, I'll probably use a poly thread to kind of match the fiber with the fabric. There's so much information out there about thread. I'm gonna to try to find some sort of resources here on the internet to help you. And I've also used different off brands. I find the Craftsy Now a Blueprint brand has a pretty good knockoff of Aurafil. I've also used connecting threads. They have a cheaper price, but I found the quality of the connecting threads, they're like a quilting brand. They have pretty good threads, so I'll use whatever I like. I've used many different types of threads. I would probably, at least for, my, for me personally, I do tend to avoid like the really cheap thread, like the stuff that you get at like big box stores. I use those threads to start with. And again, if you're just playing around, you know, buy your thread at Walmart, get it wherever you can or whatever. Maybe you can find some at thrift stores, but as I got more into sewing, I really appreciated quality thread. So most of the threads I have now are, are of a, a higher quality and I will pay more for that. But there are ways to save some money. Again, like with getting in-house brands like Craftsy Now Blueprint 
or connecting threads. Guterman thread is also pretty reasonably priced as well. There are so many different types of thread out there, but it does come in handy to have many different colors so that you can match it to your project. But I'll be honest, I use white and off-white a lot in my projects and I tend to have a lot of that on hand. I don't often use colored thread. Some colors are very specific and I find I use colored thread just on certain projects if the color calls for it. But a lot of the time I'm literally just using white or very neutral colored thread. If you're just starting to build up your thread collection, I would stick to a lot of neutrals like different shades of white, off-white, black, gray, those types of colors. And you'll probably be able to use those quite often. If you're doing like a huge project and it say is like purple, obviously you'd wanna get a purple or whatever color it is you're using. I have a red that I bought for a specific project. I really don't use red thread that often. That's why there's still a lot of it on this spool. Let's talk cutting, specifically scissors and rotary cutters. I have tons of scissors at this point. I have scissors I purchased. I've had scissors that were sent to me. I have a lot of different rotary cutters. And I find a lot of these brands are all pretty good. They do what they say. So I'm not super picky about cutting implements. I will say I am pretty partial to Ginger scissors and rotary cutters. I have quite a few Ginger cutting implements. I think the quality is amazing. These are more expensive overall, but I really like these brands. I know a lot of people are pretty crazy about the Kai brand. I haven't really played around with, with those a lot, but I'm thinking about picking up something that's Kai. You also have to keep in mind when you're buying something like a rotary cutter, and I have done quite a few videos before on scissors and rotary cutters, if you wanna check those out. When you're looking at rotary cutters too, you have to not just count the cost of the handle, but how much do the refills cost? I really like my Ginger rotary cutter. The refill blades are pretty pricey. So if you don't have that in your budget, you may wanna go with something like Ulfa Fisker or something that's a little more economical. They all do the same thing. I am kind of partial to the Ginger still, but mostly because I like the handle and you know, I just find it feels really good in the hand. I have scissors of all different sizes. I have smaller scissors. I've got dressmaker shears. I picked these up at Target a while ago. These are just kind of all purpose scissors, but I just really like these scissors. It's from U Brands. I haven't seen these online, but I picked these up in store. Love the handle on this. I use this for cutting things like interfacing or stabilizer. And if you are getting fabric scissors, a lot of sewists know this, but you only use these scissors for fabric. Do not use these to cut paper. Don't use these to cut random items. These are fabric only scissors. Another pair of scissors that I use a lot, these are like surgical shears, surgical scissors that I got off of Amazon. And I love these. I use these a lot for embroidery, for applique, because you can snip really close to the surface. So again, these are great for using as snips. For the embroidery machine though, I always have these and they're pretty, I believe this was pretty reasonably priced. I have a lot of scissors, self-healing cutting mat. That's something you are probably going to wanna get if you're getting serious about sewing and quilting. I have all different kinds of self-healing cutting mats. I've had Ulfa, I've had Fiskars. I have Alvin, which is a brand I get on Amazon. I have a really big cutting mat I got from Dolly, also available on Amazon. That's my biggest one yet, and that's this blue one. This is a 36 by 48. Quality-wise, I find that the uh, Alvin cutting mat, I think is, is better overall as far as the self-healing properties go. But as far as value goes, I think the Dolly is the winner. This was pretty cheap compared to a lot of other brands. You'll have to check the latest price on Amazon. The self-healing cutting feature is not as good, but for the size and the price, I thought it was a good value and I, I feel fine with this purchase. I think over time, this one might not stand up, but for the price I paid, I'm okay with that. I also recently got a Cricut self-healing cutting mat. I got that more because it was decorative, it was pink, and I'm using that kind of as like a backdrop for photography and videography. I like it so far and it has like a pink side with flowers on it. It's got a, bla a black gray side with, uh, with the uh, measurements on it. Uh, but a self-healing cutting mat, a rotary cutter, and a ruler, which we're gonna get to, something you're definitely going to want to make accurate cuts with fabric. Rulers, man, I am all about creative grids. Hands down, the best quilting rulers 
ever. I have quite a few of these in different sizes. I've got a block, I've got square blocks to cut quilting blocks, 24 by eight and a half. I use this ruler a lot. The quality of these is amazing. And I love that it's got this uh, non skid like material on the back. It doesn't slide around. I've used a lot of different brands of rulers, but uh, Creative Grids has made, in my opinion, the best one. These are a little more expensive, but I find uh, it's definitely worth the price. This one has a few scratches on it, but I'm hoping maybe I can clean this up. So Creative Grids rulers all around. Hands down, my absolute favorite. If you've seen any of my garment making videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of getting washers from the hardware store to use as pattern weights. These are cheap, they do the job, they're very utilitarian. I don't need fancy pattern weights. These were very reasonably priced. And I was at Home Depot because I was looking at these again, uh, but more to use as weights for my sandbag for photography lights. And they sell these in boxes now for about, I think for about $15 you can get washers and nuts. So either of those you could use as pattern weights, but that's a pretty economical way to buy pattern weights. You will also want to get some sort of pin cushion and pins. You can get the magnetic kind like this. And I'm a big fan of these button pins for quilting. I like the heads, they're easy to use. And these are the heads are also melt proof. So when you run over them with your iron, they won't get all gunky. I also have these pins. These are silk pins. I know I did another video detailing my pin collection. So if you wanna check that out, I go more in depth on that. This pin cushion I actually made, my YouTube pin cushion, cause this is a YouTube channel, but these silk pins are great for doing finer fabric because it doesn't leave holes. Highly recommend, I've used these for quite a while. I also really like the Magic Pins brand. I don't have them out right now, but again, check out the pins video cause I demonstrate all of my pins. I also have a few different tape measures. These are good for obviously doing measurements if you're doing clothing. So you can get these, you know, pretty much anywhere. You can get these from Joann's, Walmart. You can order these online. I, I got this one in some sort of sewing subscription box. I thought it was really cute. So these are just some of the basic things you'll need uh, to get started with your sewing. Oh yes, in fabric, if you've been sewing for a while, you know that you build up a stash over time. If you're just getting started and you're just messing around, Use old clothing, use old sheets, old towels to practice on. Something that you don't care about if you mess up because, you know, I'll be honest, your first sewing projects, they might be, they might be disasters, but it gets better from there. I promise you it does. If you are just starting, you may not want to use like your expensive fabric. You may want to use just stuff you've got around the house or go to Goodwill and get some old sheets, get some old clothes to practice on. Don't drop like a ton of money right away on designer fabric. Use old stuff that you don't care about because you won't feel as much pressure to make things perfect because sewing, you're, you're not gonna be perfect. I'm not perfect. I've been doing this for a while and you wanna use something that, that you're not gonna feel too much anxiety over. If you're also new, I would recommend starting off with woven fabric. Woven fabric is fabric that's not stretchy. Uh, cotton fabric is really good because it's easy to press starting off and it's easy to work with. Good projects for newbies would be things like placemats, napkins, you know, baby blankets, stuff that's uh, you can use like quilting cotton. I think quilting cotton is a great fabric for people starting off that want to make cool stuff. But again, this is also not the most expensive fabric ever. You can also get it from a lot of places, uh, some places to source fabric. If you're new, I would say Goodwill, definitely go try to find old sheets, anything you think might be good, but look for something that's like a cotton material or a cotton poly blend, something that does not stretch, something that's woven. Another thing you could do is ask around. There's a lot of people maybe in your community who sew that have tons of fabric that might be willing to give you some of their scraps, might be, you know, have some fabric that they don't use. I personally have a lot of fabric that if a family member came to me and said, hey, I'm starting to sew, I would send them home with a bag of fabric. So look for people that you know in your circle that have been sewing or quilting for a while that might have some extras. So that's another way to get fabric for free or very cheap because I love when people I know are learning to sew and quilt. So I would be happy. 
I'm always happy to try to help out people who are new and just getting started, they're interested. So look for people you know. If you are looking to pick up some brand new fabric, there are a few websites I would recommend for some good deals. The first one is Fabric Wholesale Direct. I've ordered from there before. I was pleasantly surprised by the quality, especially for the very low prices they charge. I've got a referral link below if you wanna check them out. They have many different types of fabric, some real fancy stuff. I also like that people leave reviews and put customer photos of the stuff they've made. They also have videos showing the fabric, like what it, how thick it is, the transparency of it, like what the drape is. And I find that gives you a really good idea of what that fabric is like before you purchase it. I know it can be kind of tricky to buy fabric online because you, you can't see and touch it in person, but I think it really helps. And I think their prices are amazing. And you know they've been offering quite a few different types of fabrics in their selection. Fashionfabricsclub.com, another great one. They have like some sort of like, I don't know if they're like wholesale or outlet fabrics, but they don't always have the same fabric, so it's kind of like a limited. If you see fabric you like there, pick it up right away. Don't wait because once it's gone, it's gone. I've gotten some really good fabrics from that site. Also fabric.com, you can often get really great sales at that site. It is owned by Amazon. The selection is mind-bogglingly huge, but I've gotten some really good deals on fabric.com. Also a fat quarter shop. Dot com. This is a more of a quilting cotton website, but they have like the latest designer fabrics and they have a lot of sales. They always have like pre-cuts on sale, certain pre-cuts. They've got a flash sale every day where they have a really good deal on one item. And I've gotten some really good uh, sale items, just 30, 40, 50% off. Fatquartershop.com. I am an affiliate for full disclosure, but I'm also a fan. I like their selection. I also follow their YouTube channel. They've got some good tutorials. So there's a lot of, that's the good thing about, you know, living in 2020 is there's so many online resources if you want to learn how to do something. So those sites are all, all excellent for fabric. Also, I want to talk irons because that is something you might not think of right off the bat when you're learning to sew, but you're going to do a lot of ironing, believe me, because ironing is a very important part of sewing, pressing an item, pressing your fabric. This is a very cheapo iron. I got this from Aldi for like $12.99. Believe it or not, this is my favorite iron. I also recently did a video on my iron collection and you don't need a real expensive iron. This one works perfectly fine. It's got great steam. Because it was like $13, if this gets ruined, I don't really care. I have quite a few irons and they all kind of do the same thing, whether you're paying, you know, $10 for it or $150, but I would be a lot more upset if something happened to a $150 Oliso iron than I do with my $13 Aldi iron. The last thing I wanna talk about is lint rollers. You're gonna to wanna to get several of these at a time. I use lint rollers constantly in my everyday life and here in my sewing room. There's gonna be like thread and little fibers just all over the place. So just get ready for that. Have your vacuum handy and be sure to have a lint roller because you're gonna use this constantly. I use mine. I have probably like eight at a time. These I think I got from Aldi as well. I'm a big Aldi fan. If you have one near you, be sure to check it frequently. They often have a lot of supplies that are great for people who sew. In fact, in the most recently flyer, I saw a sewing machine, I saw a sewing kit. They have fabric sometimes. So you never know what you're gonna find at Aldi, but I think it's a great treasure trove for crafters and sewists because I've seen a lot of things that would be helpful for the sewing room over at Aldi. So check out your Aldi if you have one, but yes, lint roller for sure. And going along with like the ironing, pressing stuff is uh, some type of ironing board. Currently, I actually don't have one. I need to pick up a new ironing board because I left it behind at an old apartment when we didn't really have enough room in the moving truck, but I've been using this like 24 by 24 uh, DIY ironing board I made. Basically, I went to the hardware store, I got a 24 by 24 inch uh, wood board, and I covered it with uh, quilt batting. I stapled it all the way around, and then I just made a 
cover out of it and that's what I've been using. You've probably seen it in quite a few of my videos here. That was just a DIY project that I did. Works real well, but I know I'm gonna need some sort of ironing board. I do have a sleeve board that I use for things like, you know, pant cuffs and shirt sleeves. Uh, but for the most part, if you're just doing like quilting and little items that you can press flat, just having some sort of flat surface to press on comes in handy. So those are just a few items you might want to pick up if you are new to sewing. Thank you for the viewer that suggested this video. I thought it was a great idea. Down below in the comments, let me know what items do you feel you'd recommend to someone new to sewing and quilting? Let me know what are your like top five items? Like if you have nothing, you're starting from scratch, what are like the first five things you would buy if you had to start all over again or if you were helping someone else get started? Because I'm just curious to see what other people think as well. Uh, but I just wanted to share some of my top picks for beginners. If you are new to sewing or you're just stopping over here because you find it interesting or you have some sort of curiosity, consider subscribing to this channel, The Sewing Report. I'm doing a Learn to Sew in 2020 series. So we're gonna be going over a lot of beginner topics and covering some beginner sewing projects and also how to use this machine, the Brother CS7000i. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys next time.